I saw the videos that other guy did up in my studio. Still don't know how that guy gets in here. But anyway, man, that was some good stuff. The whole product of square roots equals square root of products thing. That's really cool. I figured I want to try that out. So I got some problems here. We'll start with this one. Looks like we're multiplying two numbers here, right? This one and this one, but we're really multiplying four numbers. We've got a three, a square root of 98, a five, and a square root of 18. We're taking four of these numbers and multiplying them together. Now we can multiply them in whatever order we want to. So I'm going to group them up, the three and the five, and I'm going to group the two square roots because that'll let me use that clever gimmick that that other guy taught us. We've got a product of square roots here. So the three times five is just 15. My product of square roots is the square root of the product. I can write this as a square root of 98 times 18. Uh-oh. I don't want to multiply these out. Maybe this trick isn't so cool after all. But, well, wait a second. 98. 98 is 49 times 2. 49 is a perfect square. I can break that up. And 18 is 2 times 9. 9 is a perfect square. So I can write this as 15 times the square root. 98 is 49 times 2. 18 is 2 times 9. And now I can break this up. I can run this little product of square roots equals square root of the product thing. I can run it in reverse. I've got a square root of a product here. I can break it up into a product of a bunch of square roots that I know how to handle. So I've got 15 times the square root of 49. I'm going to keep these two twos together because that's 2 squared. So I've got times the square root of 2 squared, then times the square root of 9. And these are all square roots we know how to handle. The square root of 49, that's just 7. The square root of 2 squared, well, that's just 2. The square root of 9 is 3. And this is an easy product for us. 15 times 2 is 30. 30 times 3 is 90. 90 times 7 is 630. And that's way nicer to look at than that mess up there. All right, let's try another problem. Oh boy, I got a square root of a fraction here. Uh, well, at least we can simplify the fraction first. We got a common factor of 3. We can take out a 75 and 27. So we'll start there. We'll write this. Take a factor of 3 out of the 75, we'll be left with 25. Take a factor of 3 out of the 27, we'll be left with 9. So 75 over 27 equals 25 over 9. And these are both perfect squares. We can write 25 over 9 as the square of 5 thirds, because 5 squared is 25, 3 squared is 9. And we know how to take the square root of a square. The square root of the square of 5 thirds is just 5 thirds. Because, of course, 5 thirds is the number that we square in order to get 5 thirds squared. All right, that, that wasn't so bad. Let's move on to this. Wait a second. Isn't this the same problem as what we just did? Oh, no, 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 no. They're, they're, they're a little different. This is, this is the square root of a fraction. This is a fraction with a square root in the numerator and a square root in the denominator. So, so they're different. They're not actually the same problem. Okay, what are we going to do here? Well, square root of 75. Well, let's try breaking that up. I mean, before we saw this problem back here, we had this square root of this mess in here, and we broke it up. We found some perfect squares. 49 times 2, 2 times 9. That helped us a lot. Let's try that down here. Square root of 75. Well, we know that 75 is just 25 times 3, and 25 is a perfect square, and that's nice. 27, of course, is 9 times 3. And now I can break this square root of a product into a product of square roots. We've got the square root of 25 times the square root of 3, and the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. Square root of 25 is 5, square root of 9 is 3. So we've got 5 times the square root of 3 over 3 times the square root of 3. Hey, we've got a common factor of the square root of 3 in the numerator and the denominator. We can cancel that out. Here's why. I can rewrite this fraction as 5 thirds times the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. 
And of course, that's just one, so that cancels out. And we're just left with 5 thirds. Wait a second. 5 thirds. 5 thirds. Maybe these are the same problem. We've got the square root of a quotient and the quotient of square roots. Maybe we can do the same thing like we did right here. We have square root of a product equals a product of square roots. Maybe we always have the square root of a quotient equals the quotient of square roots. Let's check that out. So what we want to do is we want to compare the square root of x over the square root of y and the square root of x over y. Now thinking back to what that other guy did when he was doing this with products and he he started with the product of square roots and he squared that. Let's try that here. We're going to start with this quotient. We're going to square this quotient. That's about the only thing I know how to do with this. Square root of x over the square root of y. We're going to square that. We know how to square fractions. We square the numerator. And we square the denominator. And of course, the square of the square root of x, that's just x. Square of the square root of y, that's just y. So this squared equals x over y. Um, so what does that mean? Well, if we had 5 squared equals 25, that tells us that 5 is the square root of 25. This is, this is what square root means. So here we have this quotient squared equals x over y. 5 squared equals 25. 5 equals the square root of 25. Because this squared equals x over y, we know that this is the square root of that. We know that this is the square root of x over y. So the quotient of square roots does equal the square root of the quotient. And that's why this problem is the same as this problem. All right, we got one more. This time we got a square root of a decimal. I don't know how to handle decimals, but I do know how to handle fractions now. So I'm going to take this decimal, turn it into a fraction. We're going to start off by writing this as the square root of 92 16 over 100. Yeah, dividing by 100, that means move the decimal place over 2. So this does equal 92.16. And we know how to handle this. We can take the square root of this quotient, and we can write it as a quotient of square roots. And that's nice, because square root of 100, that's just 10. And we get the square root of 92.16 over 10. Uh-oh. Um, now what? Well, I guess we can start pulling out factors from this, just like we've done on all these other, all these earlier problems. You know, we started here, we had 75, we broke it into the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. Let's try the same thing here. Can we pull some squares out of this? Well, we can pull a 4 out. This is clearly divisible by 4 because the number formed by the last two digits is 16. That's divisible by 4. So this is divisible by 4. We can write this as 4 times 4 goes into 92, 23 times, and goes into 16, 4 times. So this is 4 times 23, 04, all over 10. Now we can pull that square root of 4. We can pull that out. This is the square root of 4 times 23, square root of 23, 04. All over 10. And of course, the square root of 4 is just 2. So we have 2 times the square root of 23, 04, all of that over 10. Now, 2304, that's divisible by 9. 2 plus 3 plus 0 plus 4 is 9. That's divisible by 9. So 2304 is divisible by 9. We can pull out another perfect square factor. This is 2 times the square root of 9 times, divide 9 into this. 9 goes into 23 twice, carry the 5 over. 9 goes into 55 times. Carry another 5 over, 9 times 256, all over 10. We can pull out the square root of 9. That becomes a 3. So this is just 2 times 3 
times the square root of 256, all over 10. 256 is a perfect square. 256 is 16 squared. And if you didn't see that, you could pull out another factor of 4. You'd have the square root of 4 times the square root of 64. If you pulled out a factor of 4 here, and square root of 4 is 2, square root of 64 is 8. That gives you 16 again. So this is 2 times 3 times 16 all over 10. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 16 is 96. 96 divided by 10 is 9.6. This is 9.6. And we can do a quick check here. Quick check. 92.16, that's between 81 and 100. 9.6 is between 9 and 10. We figure the square root of something that's between 81 and 100 is going to be between the square root of 81, which is 9, the square root of 100, which is 10. 9.6 sure is. And if we multiply 9.6 by itself, we're going to get something that ends in 6. This ends in 6. Quick check doesn't tell us for sure that we're right, but we can be pretty confident that we're done.